Oh my gosh, it's a sauna in here. So today we have a test bench and it is just running Heaven Benchmark right now on loop. This is a pretty nice gaming PC that I have in front of me here. We have an RTX 3060 paired with a Ryzen 5 5600X. And yeah, it's, it's running Heaven really nicely, 320 some odd FPS right now here. It's just running at 1080p with some tessellation and I believe the ultra details, but that's actually not really relevant to what we're doing today. More relevant is the statistics that you see on the screen here where we actually have the clock speed, the temperatures and all that of both the CPU and the GPU running. And this is roughly equalized numbers that you see on the screen. Now, this test has been running for several minutes now and it looks like for the most part it's reached that sort of equilibrium point the gpu is in the upper 60 degree range and the cpu which isn't actually working all that hard for this test is in the low 50s with a really nice scythe cooler on it but i'm about to do something that i probably shouldn't there that should help things stay uh, nice and uh, cool. Not really, it's gonna get really toasty in this box, but what is not toasty is the water in this bottle. Today's video sponsor is the coldest water, and this water bottle is great, has a nice textured finish to it, has some nice grippy, rubbery bits on it, and you can get 10% off right now if you use the links and the offer code in the description down below. They also have a running giveaway if you're interested in that sort of thing, so see the links down there for more on what is really Really just a fantastic water bottle but now let's turn our attention back to this test bench which should actually be heating up quite quickly now So while we wait for the test bench to heat up a little bit, I do wanna give you a little more information about this lovely Newegg box here. We have this box taped up with one side open so I could easily slip it over the top of the test bench. And we have three cutouts here for cables. So this gets the best sealing off uh, potential that this box can possibly offer for this test bench. And yeah, it's going to heat up quite quickly. Uh, the cardboard seems very high quality from Newegg. I cannot complain. It was very easy to cut with some sharp scissors. So yeah, this box is serving its purpose beautifully. So I've only been waiting around a couple of minutes here and the GPU is already up there at 80 degrees Celsius, just hit 80 degrees C and the CPU, even though it's not working very hard and even though it has a massive side cooler on it, is up there at about 60 degrees Celsius. It sort of fluctuates a little bit depending on the scene. But what you're gonna start seeing, especially on the GPU side of things, is that clock speed is no longer above 1900 megahertz. It's starting to come down in an effort to really spare its own life in this particular case. And what's happening here is you're losing performance as the heat builds up in this system. Now, obviously this is just a benchmark, so it doesn't really make a big real world difference if you're just watching the scene play because frankly, the 3060 is gonna be able to run a 1080p rendering of the Heaven benchmark really, really well. But where you will notice it is in your games. And what I'm really simulating here, what the real point of this is, is to point out just how important airflow can be to a system because you can have a cooler on say the CPU that should do a perfectly adequate job. But if you're locking all that hot air inside the case with the CPU, if that air can't escape, then it really doesn't matter how great your cooler is. Eventually it will get saturated and heat will build up in the system. Case in point, since I've been talking, you may have noticed that the CPU is up in the mid seventies now, even though again, it's not working hard at all. And that GPU is now above 80 degrees. It's at 82 degrees Celsius. And that's probably about where it's gonna stabilize. What we're gonna see though, is the clock speed suffering as a result of the air is just not able to escape this lovely new egg box enclosure. Okay, so this test has been running now with the box on the test bench for right at 10 minutes or so. And with the check-in, what we're seeing here is 90 degrees Celsius on the GPU and that clock speed is clear down into the lower half of the 1700 megahertz range. Obviously it's fluctuating a little bit though. It's 
trending more toward the 1700 flat if not into the 1600 range now and the CPU is all the way up to just shy of 80 degrees Celsius and what you'll also see with the clock speeds on the individual cores there is they are nowhere near that 4.5 ish gigahertz mark that they might all be hitting or getting close to if the CPU was completely under control temperature wise so the next step here is to just pull the box off all at once and just feed fresh air into the system and we're gonna watch in real time how fast these temperatures come back down all right little buddy here we go breathe holy cow that box oh my gosh it's a sauna in here So I will say the noise picked up, but that's because we don't have a big cardboard box in front of us. But what we're seeing very rapidly here, the GPU is already down right at 80 degrees Celsius. It's actually falling now into the 70 degrees Celsius. That clock speed is picking up pretty quickly here. It's all the way back up to right at 1880, 1890 megahertz. And as the temperature comes on down, that's just gonna continue to increase back probably over 1900 megahertz. And then on the CPU side of things, what we're seeing on all the clocks, instead of most of the clocks being locked down there at the three-ish gigahertz range, now we're seeing it popping back up to about 4.6 gigahertz more frequently as the temperature on that CPU plummets now, clear down to about 60 degrees Celsius. The GPU is down to 70 degrees Celsius. And again, that clock speed is still up there in the upper 1800 megahertz, almost 19 megahertz range there it just peaked above 1900 megahertz for the first time in a while here is the entire point of this whole video a lot of times when your PC is running into thermal issues one of the go-to solutions for people has always been to just pull the side panel off completely so the PC can breathe a little bit easier however occasionally people will do things like throw money at a really nice air cooler to pop on their CPU or possibly just blow out all the dust from the GPU which can definitely help especially if you actually have a case that does have good airflow but a lot of the time you're investing money into something something like a better cooler for your CPU when the real solution is to actually invest a little bit of money into buying a case that has really great airflow. In fact, one of the more encouraging trends that I've seen in the PC space over the past year or two is case companies are really getting pushed by enthusiasts, especially channels like Gamers Nexus. They're getting pushed back towards mesh front panels that allow for easy airflow into the chassis, which is resulting in overall better temperatures. As I look here, the GPU is back down to where it should be in the upper 60 degrees Celsius range. And this CPU is down in the lower 50 degree range and the clock speeds on the CPU there are looking mighty fine in that 4.6 gigahertz range most of the time GPU is up there in the 1900 megahertz range again and all this comes as a result of just opening up airflow in the chassis or in this case in the test bench whereas if you are running a case that has very restrictive airflow maybe you have a pre-built from like Dell or HP that never was built for much airflow or maybe you just bought a PC with like a solid front tempered glass panel instead of any kind of mesh on the front of the case, you may be running into thermal issues that are absolutely not the result of a bad CPU or a bad GPU cooler design. You may just need a better case with better airflow. And if that's the case, I will link a couple of cases down below that I've looked at somewhat recently that do have fantastic airflow to keep your components running cool. I think I've tortured my 5600X and my RTX 3060 enough, but I do want to hear your thoughts. What are some of the nice cases out there that maybe are somewhat budget friendly while still offering great airflow? Let me know your thoughts in those comments down below. If you like the video and you want to see more sort of dumb content like this from me, give this video a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware. I'll see you guys in the next video.